just turns to shit. You know what? Maybe I have an opinion. Maybe I don't. Who gives a flying? It's not easy to hear. It's not easy to hear. Everything comes apart. Falling apart at the seams in it. It's not easy to hear. It's not easy to hear. And I just want to get out. I just want to find a way out of this mess. But it's not easy to hear. Maybe there's no way out. It's not easy to hear. Maybe there's no way out. Oh. Okay, so you're listening to It's Not Easy to Hear, and hopefully it's easy enough for you to hear on the uh, YouTube channel or wherever we end up having it up. Um, my name's Kevin Easy, and uh, this is a show, uh, just some music, uh, bullshit, things to get my fucking brain okay, you know, uh, just whatever randomly pops out of my fucking stupid ass head. Uh, it'll probably be a little bit profane, it'll probably be a little bit... Uh, opinionated uh, but hopefully along the way uh, when we do more of these episodes we'll have uh, some other friends of mine come on here and uh, you know sing or dance or tell jokes or whatever the fuck they do um, so yeah um, let's uh, let's start off and we'll let's start off with uh, I hope you really like the intro there it took me all of like 10 seconds to make <laughs> But, uh, yeah, really, realistically, it took me about 10 seconds to record, but like 30 times to do before that. So, yeah, well, that's what we've got for right now. Um, I'm currently sitting in my room recording this, uh, smelling smoke, uh, stale cigarettes. Uh, I don't have any new ones, so I'm smoking butts here. That's, you know, that's the, that's the sound of a good radio show when the uh, person putting this on is uh, smoking cigarette butts. Mmm. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. That's some good stuff. Hey, if it's not the cigarettes, uh, cigarette butts, then we're going to be smoking the uh, vape cigarettes. And I'm not hip to that yet. I, I, I've been trying. Uh, it's just It just doesn't seem... I, I don't feel the cancer. I don't feel the cancer going into my lungs, you know? I want to feel that. I want to feel that burn. I want to feel that smoke. I want to... Oh, that's what I like. I like to feel like I'm killing myself every day. Anyways, uh, so uh, more, I'm going to listen to some music here in a minute, but uh, I'll try to get far enough in this that, you know, if uh, YouTube wants to take this down for putting music that's not licensed, uh, they'll maybe won't listen for the few first couple minutes of it, <laughs> right? Right. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Smoking's great, right? I don't know. How many people out there smoke? How many of them, how many people have tried to quit? I know I've tried myself in the past. Cause it wasn't for my own. I don't give a rat's ass about my own health really yet. Well, I know I'm in my late 30s and I, I really don't care. I mean, um, I probably should. I don't. I think it's what's keeping me from killing myself sometimes. <laughs> you know? Um, that being said, I know there's a lot of people out there that are all like, yeah, I want to be healthy for my children and everything. I could give a rat's ass about any of that. But, uh, no, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, you know. I appreciate what other people have different opinions about shit. But, uh, I personally, I think the vaping thing's kind of overrated. Like I said, you got those one guys that have the super vapors, you know, like super, just, it's like a fog. And we played the show at uh, the Vapor King Lounge, which, uh, thank you, thanks a lot to them for having us out there. Um, but, you know, it, it looked like a fog. It, it looked like a haunted house. That's how much fog was in there from people like vaping and i would rather had cigarette smoke <laughs> personally gosh it takes like four butts to actually get a fucking whole cigarette here huh okay so uh that being said we're gonna play uh, a doc shepherd song this song is called let me be your cigarette Yeah. 
That was Dax Riggs with Let Me Be Your Cigarette. And uh, let's talk about relationships for a while. Well, this has been my new favorite topic lately. Uh, I suck at them. <laughs> I absolutely suck at them. I've got more exes than CM Punk has in his straight edge society. Uh, and they all hate me. Yeah, they do pretty much. Well, I wouldn't say all of them do. I have a few, uh, but I mean, I fucking have 1,200. The, the majority of them hate me. Um, but I, through no fault of my own. <laughs> well, maybe so. I don't, I don't know. But let's, let's just talk about how they suck. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm to the point now. I think, I think I'm, I'm probably just going to die alone. I'll die. I'll pro- hopefully die on like giving a last fucking hurrah on the microphone here you know either that or i'll die on stage um uh for you that don't know me um i play in a band called let it go um i've been doing it for quite a few years before been actually playing music for about 20 years um i was a fo- vocalist was a singer whatever you want to call it vocalist for uh First band was called Code Black, and then from Code Black, that was like I was a basically senior in high school. From that, we went to, went to a band called American Nightmare, and we were basically a Misfits cover band um, before, like, uh, right, right about the time the box set came out. Because um, before that, you know, uh, the internet hadn't progressed to where you could get on and just see everything on the internet, like everybody's lyrics and shit, you know. So you had to have, like... Um, you had to have the vinyls or whatever at that time because the CDs didn't have the lyrics to them, and it was hard as fuck to understand what the fucking Glenn Danzig was singing back then. I mean, it was, you know, it was it was it was difficult. You had to you know really really pay attention, and we were still arguing amongst ourselves what the fuck he said. So when the box set came out, uh, it opened up the whole doorway to actually playing all these songs, and uh, we we started out doing that, and uh, you know before too long, I mean it wasn't like we I think we played like one show as a Misfits cover band, and soon after that we were writing our own material, uh, which we ended up becoming from American Nightmare. We became the Uninvited, and uh, Uninvited we had uh, we recorded a whole CD of that material, and you know we had a little bit of. Uh, I don't know, no variety is being a punk band, I guess. Uh, you know, we painted our faces and all that crap before, you know, and then, then it kind of got to the point where, like, there was a lot of other people doing that shit. Um, even before the horror rock thing, um, you know, it was just, uh, like, you know, your, oh, I don't know, just two, like, juggalos and, you know, <laughs> like, all this stuff. And, like, you know, we're like, ah, maybe this isn't the best thing to do. So, you know, from that, we just kind of went to more of just, you know, just playing as a normal band, even though we had these, like, songs that were, very horror rock in nature and um over the years we've tried to i i have been i've tried to get away from like writing strictly like horror rock stuff because i don't believe in being categorized as one kind of genre of music i like a lot of stuff i like you know i actually pretty much have no problem with any kind of music at all really classical country you know i I do kind of dislike dislike the new country thing but you know the pop country deal but it's not like I hate everything that was ever made. It's just, for the most part, I think it's kind of a, it sucks, you know? Um, but, I, you know, I do like old school country, and I and I do like, you know, I do like pop music. I You know, I, I like uh, I, I like rap even. Like, um, of course, my rap tastes are a little bit older, you know? I'm not necessarily the dance shit that's on the radio now or, or these people have that's, you know, just like, I, I don't know, like... Let me give you this example. Okay, um, lately I'm working this job and it's a it's a shitty factory and I go in there every day. Now, I, I ride my bike there because like uh, I lost my license last year for a DUI. It fucked my life up. You know, it seems like everything's kind of spiraled down the toilet since. But let's just go with me on this one for a minute. Anyways, you know I've been trying to get ahead of the game here. Fucking lost my license. I did, or when I lost my license, I lost the job I did have because uh, I couldn't drive anymore. So I've been bouncing around from, well, I went to one factory. It was a shithole, uh, fucking doing these bar- burning barrels. It must have been, I, I couldn't believe this place actually passed like, any kind of EPA standards, for real. Like, they burnt fucking paint and shit out of barrels. I mean, black smoke everywhere. Fuck, I was covered in fucking soot. I worked this job for six fucking months, man. Riding my fucking stupid-ass mountain bike clear across my fucking town to go to this fucking shithole of a job. I was the only white guy there besides the owners. And, uh, you know, which is no problem. I mean, it, it wasn't like, I, you know, I'm like, oh, fuck, I hate working with, you know, people of different color. No, it was it was the fact that I was white boy there all the time. And, you know, we it was a fucking shitty, dirty job. And I got paid fucking shithole money for it. And fucking 
I didn't even get 40 hours a week. So, you know, I worked that until I had to do uh, my um, my jail sentence for fucking my DUI. And I spent a wonderful time. This was the uh, fourth DUI I'd had over my lifetime. And I'm, like I said, I'm pushing 40 here. And uh, I'm a fucking brilliant role model. So tell your kids to be exactly like me here. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyhow... Uh, I go to jail. Um, when I go, well, actually, when I go to front of the judge, I'm like, okay, I haven't had a, I hadn't had a DUI in like seven years. You know, I've been ke- keeping my nose pretty clean about shit. I just, once again, relationships. I was dating a girl and fucking, I uh, got woe is me one night and went out to the bar and blah, blah blah. Drove home and I was a block from my house and got pulled over my vehicle. And that sent everything in the spiral down. But uh, yeah, that being said, um. When I went for the judge, she's like, "Yes, she's a new judge," and she's like, "Yeah, we, uh, I'm, I'm gonna throw the book at you here." You, you she's like, uh, "Do you have a job?" And I'm like, "Yes," and she's like, uh, "Well, your job uh, lets you get ten days uh, in jail." And I'm like, uh, "I guess, you know." So she gives me ten days in jail with no work release, twenty more with work release, and then another month with uh, the old uh, bracelet on to monitor my alcohol consumption and uh, where I'm at. So, uh, yeah, I did that. And uh, after I got done, I stayed with the stupid-ass job I was at for a little while longer. And then it got to the point where I was like, oh, I can't do this anymore. And uh, I got back with a uh, girl I'd been dating and uh, decided I was going to move to a uh, surrounding town, uh, Finley, Ohio, with her. And uh, I spent a couple weeks with her there. And I, I, I got a job there, like, within a, a, about a week. And I got this job. It was a nice factory job. Way nicer than the one I'd been working, making... I don't know, like 10 bucks an hour or whatever. And uh, I started on a Monday, and by Thursday, I came home, and uh, the irony of life is, uh, well, she's about as big, if not bigger, an alcoholic than I am. And um, she flipped out, and uh, I had to call up my parents to come fucking pick me up because I had no place to stay because she'd freak the fuck out. So I moved back to Lima, and uh, which is where I live at now. And um, I, um, God, this is a long-winded story here, but I, I, I get I get back here, and uh, I'm immediately trying to get another job. And uh, fucking, I get one at this place here, and uh, this this it's this factory called Nelson's Packaging, and I don't know if anybody knows this place. I don't know if anybody f- familiar with Lima is listening to this at all. But anyways, it's a fucking shithole too. They. It wouldn't be so bad, but I ride there every morning, and it's about a 15-minute bike ride. And I leave the house at like 5:20 in the morning, 5:25. I have to be there at 5:45. When you know, snow, whatever, whatever the weather is, I still got to get on the bicycle and ride my ass there. And some days, I'm telling you, it's hard to get out of bed to jump on a bicycle and run that far. But that being said, I'm getting in great physical <laughs> physical condition. So I get there, and there's been quite a few mornings I get there, and like I, I'm met with a, a squadron of other losers, and and the, <laughs> waiting to see if we're gonna work uh, in the morning. And I, what is it with people now that they they can fucking sit there with their fucking phones and play their shitty ass fucking rap music while you're sitting there waiting? I I don't want to hear your fucking music. I, I see this is where I'm gonna gonna start in a rant. How fucking rude are people now that you got to fucking sit there with your fucking phone out letting us hear what the fuck you want to listen to? Have you ever heard of fucking earphones? Put them in. I don't want to hear your goddamn booty music, man. I don't want to fucking hear it. Especially when I'm pissed off in the morning and waiting to fucking have them tell me, no, we don't have room for you today. Go home. You know? I mean, how fucking rude are we anymore? For real. Like, I, I was, I've got like fucking 1,700 songs on my phone. Do you hear me blasting goddamn Black Flag and shit and fucking Venom there? Hell no, I don't. You know why? Because I respect other people. I really do. I, I'm an asshole. I'm a fucking huge dick. But you know what? I do respect fucking people's boundaries about some other shit. You know? Especially about the music. I don't want to fucking play my music in front of you like that. It's fucking rude. It's uncalled for. Especially when we're in tight-ass corners. I'm fucking... I'm sitting there like... You know, catching my breath, fucking sweat running down my face from fucking pedaling my goddamn little pump scoot down there. And fucking, here I gotta listen to some goddamn asshole who's fucking too fucking goddamn ignorant to fucking keep his goddamn fucking earphones in. Whew. Okay. Yeah, that was my ramp so far. Uh, you know, um, yeah. Um, so let's, uh, fuck, let's listen to something a little bit angry. Um. I got it. Let's listen to some G.G. Allen. There we go. This is a uh, body you scum. Your ass. Well, 
And that was G.G. Allen with Body You Scum. Fucking motherfuck, punk, motherfuck, shit, fuck. <laughs> uh, man, I get in a lot of debates with people over G.G. Allen. I, I don't, like, there's a I think it, it, he's one of those people you either like him or you don't. And uh, I personally have no problem with him. I like him. Um, you know, I, I find some of the shit fucking was a little bit amusing at times. Uh, another thing is, well, maybe it was the fact that we share the same name, but... Um, Kevin, yeah, his real name is Kevin, by the way. Um, so yeah, um, maybe maybe this is part of that too. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, um, hated's fucking an interesting movie. I just actually watched that not too long ago. I I uh, I I'd watched other documentaries about G.G. Allen before, but I hadn't seen Hated. And I'm personally under the the idea that Merle pushed him to do most of the shit. I think Merle was a fucking douchebag. Uh, you know, he just got off on it. He, if you look at him, I mean, you watch that video. Merle, his brother, was a fucking douchebag. Is a douchebag, whatever. But, I mean, you know, it takes it takes two to fucking do shit, you know? So, at the end of the day, Gigi's a notorious jackass. But, um, you know, between, between um, Screeching Weasel, which uh, one of the first bands I got into when I was into punk rock, um, and Gigi Allen, you know, I've... I played two shows naked. Fucking one of them was I was completely sober. So, I mean, I douchebag. It must be in my fucking in my bones through those people. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. What do you guys want to talk to about now? Do you, do you want to hear some more about oh how I'm a fucking an asshole or? Uh, 
when you hear more rants on something. Uh, I wish I could I could have that interactive thing like I used to have on the radio. I used to work for Finley's radio station for a while. It was it was good good fun. Um, it didn't pay shit, but it was fun. I you know I got on there and played music and shit and made up my little own uh, little fucking shows uh, and shit. I had an interview with Charlie Sheen. I did you know the cutting up re- uh, recordings and whatnot. It was cool. Um, and now we got this, and um, you know, I'm not coming into this with any script, so I'm doing it like how I feel like doing it. So, and maybe I should, you know, have wrote out some kind of ideas for what I want to speak about, but it's not really about what I want to speak about. It's just what's coming out of my fucking head, you know. Like, uh, let's let, let's talk about another hard luck story of mine today. Oh. Um, Last weekend, I found out my, uh, I have a kid who lives in St. Louis, Missouri. Ballin, Missouri, actually, but St. St. Louis area. His mom and, uh, I don't get along. And, uh, oh, I got a little nice little paper the other day saying she's going to change his last name. I mean, come on, the kid's fucking three and you're going to change his name now? I mean, fucking Christ almighty, what a fucking bitch, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, I don't, I don't mean to offend anyone, except for her, but, you know, you're an idiot, that's that's all I gotta say, you're a fucking moron, and I'm, I'm so sick of fucking games that people play with the shit, you know, it, it really is, it's a fucking goddamn game, whether it be fucking because of her fucking parents who aren't the goddamn kid's fucking parent, or the fact that she's a fucking moron and wants to be spiteful whore about it, you know, at the end of the day, you're still a fucking bitch. In the end, the only person you're going to fucking hurt is him. And, well, I guess you're hurting me too, huh? I'll shrug it off, though, you know. You can tell him all the fucking stories in the world, but in the end, I still cared about the kid. I still care about my kid, you know? It's, it is just bullshit. Fucking people are assholes. They really are. I sometimes think they're bigger assholes than I am, you know? I'm the one that's fucking notorious for it. I think it's, I'm getting getting more of the case that you know it's it's uh, I I get I I get what I get you know I give what I get if you give me fucking shit I'm gonna give it back to you so Ohio this is where, this is where we're coming from is uh, Lima Ohio fucking two four letter words right there but uh coming from Ohio Ohio is up for trying to free uh legalize legalized marijuana you know i'd like to see it happen um just because i'm fucking sick of fucking worrying about that shit in the first fucking place i'm worried i'm sick of fucking worrying about piss tests i really am i mean the fucking it doesn't get out the people who are fucking really the fuck ups it gets out the pothead guys you know the fucking really i smoke pot like the guy that smoke not me i'm an asshole I, I drink and you know Fucking have just said yes about every goddamn drug known to man at one point or another. But at this point in my life, you know, I really don't do much except for drink way too much and smoke pot occasionally, you know, and I'm not even really a big advocate of that. However, what does get me about it, though, is pot has this whole, like, shelf life in your body of, like, a fucking month if you smoke regularly. Whereas you can be a fucking crackhead or a fucking heroin addict who I despise despise heroin addicts. I fucking absolutely despise the earth that they walk on. Heroin addicts are the biggest pieces of shit in the world. Anyhow, um, besides those fucks, um, you know, the the shelf life of their fucking drug of choice and their fucking system is a hell of a lot shorter. I mean, fucking cocaine, crack, fucking a couple days, fucking heroin, maybe a week. Really? Like the pill head popping motherfuckers that fucking fuck up lives and are fucking nodding off all the fucking time at work and wherever else they're at. They can pass a goddamn drug screen in a week and the guy who fucking smokes dope and fucking takes care of his family and all that bullshit. Not me, but the ones that do that do that. Uh, they're fucking, you know, they're fucking scapegoated as being like, oh, he's horrible drug addicts. I mean, the system's fucked in the first place, man. So let's just get rid of it. Let's just fucking quit worrying about drug testing people because it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You're, it's just a game. Like everybody knows that fucking you know. There's ways of fucking around it. Like, well, I'll take somebody else's piss or fucking synthetic urine. You know, like, I don't know. Is it me or is it seem to me? It's it seems to me it's like it's a big scam. Like we're we're keeping these fucking urine places in fucking uh, you know um, some kind of 
we're get we're we're getting we're giving them the money, you know. We're getting we're giving buying the synthetic urines and buying apparatuses to fucking strap in our crotch and shit, or or you know looking for somebody who has clean piss and oh, it's just a fucking it's just a it's just a fucking never ending circus, man. It really is. It's it's fucking retarded. It's fucking for real. It's fucking retarded, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How about we listen to this song? Let's let's do this. Let's listen to uh this is my band. Um this is uh Let It Go and uh you'll hear me doing the vocals and on this and also on this recording I, I usually play guitar and, 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 and sing. But uh um this one I play bass on and uh it's called Familiar and uh now you'll be familiar with us. Haha. <laughs> um but it was originally written, you know, um quite a few years back. Um this recording's quite a few years old. But uh, you've not heard it, so it's new to you, right? So this is uh, Familiar by Let It Go. And that, once again, was 
let it go with the song familiar which is my band um so i hope you liked it um yeah uh so uh i went to the fucking soup kitchen today because i'm currently trying to uh get my shit together and don't have money for food most of the time and uh yeah food, the food kitchen uh, soup kitchen here is uh lime is uh pretty nice actually i mean as far as soup kitchens go they make a pretty decent meal every day um and i went to work this morning and they didn't have any work for me so i was like yeah i'm gonna go to the soup kitchen today so i strolled down there about 11 o'clock and uh had some kind of i don't know noodle stroganoff crap and um hard-boiled egg and coleslaw which i didn't eat and some chocolate pudding cup of coffee cup of pop cola for those who don't live in ohio um uh let's see what else was there um oh some kind of pecan roll or something yeah and uh i don't know it, it's always interesting to go to that um you know there's like all these people and i, I don't want to look down on anybody because i'm no position to look down at anybody other than assholes who make my life more difficult but People there aren't assholes making anybody's life difficult. They're just crazies and transients and people just like myself, actually, even. Although I doubt any of them are going to go do a blog on their radio deal, you know, on the computer when they get home today. But um, <laughs> that being said, uh, it's, you know, it's, 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 um, it's the word I'm looking for. Uh, it gives you a bit of humility uh, to go in that situation. I know, I, I know I've talked to people who've been there before, you know, just for the same reasons I have. And I've also talked to people who go there to help out with their churches and whatever. And um, that's a good thing. If you, if you, if you get the chance to do it, I, I, I highly suggest it. Um, not eating there unless you really have to, but eating there is not a bad thing. If you uh, don't have money to eat, at least you get one square meal a day. Um, you know, and, uh, I don't know. I don't know where I was really going with it other than the fact that I'm thankful for that. Um, I'm thankful for the fact that, you know, there are those people out there helping other people who, uh, you know, are a little behind on, uh, you know, getting their, their, their money situations not right or they're, you know, between a rock and a hard place. I mean, there's, there is help out there for those people and um, anyone can take advantage of it, you know. Well, I was also real good for having... Um, not just a soup kitchen, but there's uh, also uh, quite a few um, um, places where you can go to get groceries as well. Um, and some of them you don't even have to have, like, any kind of documentation. Just pretty much, you know, let them know, you know, where you live at and have a bill that shows that you live there. And they'll help you out with some food. And um, it's, you know, it's, it's a real good thing. There's, like, you know, it's it's nice to know that there's still people out there helping each other people, uh, helping each other out and helping other people. Um because a lot of times, the you know this this world seems pretty much uh, full of people trying to get ahead on everyone else, and uh, it can get you down a lot. And uh, God knows I've been down over this a lot, you know, the current situation, uh, and and not even just like my current situation, just in general. Like, you know, I mean, it's 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 easy to feel like the world's just a shitty, hateful place a lot, and. Um, I mean, uh, it also doesn't help that I listen to metal and punk rock, which are pretty pessimistic. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm just hoping this this show, you know, like you know, you guys want to listen to this more often, and uh, I'll, I'll keep doing them. Um, like I said, I'll make them more interesting. Like I just want to see how this went and try to put it all together, put the music together, and see how it went, and you know, see if anybody actually enjoyed it. Um, but that being said, I'll, I'll play two more songs here, and then I'll be done. Um, the first song, let's go with, uh, well, I don't know, let's, let's go with some Venom. Some Venom, we'll play some Venom. We'll play something, how about uh, Resurrection from Venom. All right, here we go.
confusion Carnal instincts unwind Animal resurrection Okay, and that was Venom with Resurrection. Um, I just want to talk about one little thing I saw on Facebook today. It was an article from uh, Simon Pegg. Uh, well, it was, a, it was an interview with Simon Pegg. And um, I don't know if you know... Who, I, I say this stuff sometimes about people to other people. And they're like, I don't know. I'm not into pop culture as much as you are, Kevin. I don't know who that is. Okay, Simon Pegg, uh, the, the uh, guy from Shaun of the Dead. Main character from Shaun of the Dead. Um, you've probably seen him in F Run, Fat Boy Run, and quite a few other things. He was in Star Trek as well. He played Scotty in Star Trek, the remakes, Star Trek 1 and Star Trek 2. But there was an article he said that, that um, he was quoted as saying that America's block or uh, blockbuster movies now are being dumbed down. It's all this fantasy stuff like The Avengers and uh, stuff, which I kind of agree with. The, the new blockbusters are these movies that are, you know, these fantasy movies. Um, and he was saying, you know, the older one, old, older blockbusters were movies like The Godfather and movies that made you think and were full of like, you know, suspense and crime dramas and stuff. And well, he might be right. It's also it's kind of biting the hand that feeds when the guy who is saying this is in Mission Impossible and Star Trek. You know, I mean, he's he's in the fantasy movies that are, you know, it's just that whole just I don't know. Celebrities, I guess they get it by with, you know, kind of putting their fucking foot in their mouth at all times but uh and, and you know and he's been like i mean every movie he's been is actually been a fantasy movie he was in paul you know which i mean the movie about an alien i mean great movie it's funny as hell but i mean uh, you know am i the only one to see something wrong with him being quoted by saying anything about fantasy movies like uh, i don't know whatever you know um yeah all right, um, let's let's uh, play one last song here, and uh, we'll wrap this up for this. We'll wrap this up like uh, well, I don't know. I never wrap anything up, it's not even gifts. <laughs> but uh, we'll wrap this this show up, and we'll wrap it up with oh uh, I don't know. Let me see. What should we What should we get here? Um, let's go with something. I'm trying to trying to think something different. I'm trying to think of something a little bit different here. A little different. A little different. A little different. Let's, uh, oh, I don't know. I'm trying to see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see what we got here on the old library catalog here. Let's do a little Hank 3. Okay. 
thank you guys for listening. Here's a little Hank 3, and uh, make sure you look for the next one, and uh, I'll see you soon. Three shades of black is where I come from Depression, misery, and hellacious fun No, we're not the kind to turn our backs and run Cause three shades of black is where we come from We are a certain breed and we don't like some are junkies, some are freaks, and others are everyday goons. No one will ever know what we've been through, and we are proud in the light of the moon. Three shades of black. darkness gives us our thrills Shades of black is where I come from I was born into sacrifice when I was young Three shades of black is what makes us strong And we all wear it like a uniform of chosen ones Three Darkness gives us our thrill. Cause the dark.